In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an animated open close menu for additional documents. Okay, so I saw this post on the community.adobe.com forums and uh, Robert was saying that he has a, created a simple slide in, slide out menu, but for some reason the script only runs once. He's tried to use uh, variables to reset the script, but no luck. What am I missing? One script are, uh, is for the on open button and the other is for the close button. And this reminded me of something that I've done for one of my clients a while back. And uh, I'll share you my process for you there. Okay, so similar to Robert, I wanted to achieve the same thing in this course that I developed for one of my clients. We wanted to provide links to some government documents that were readily available on the internet. So we've included uh, that in this grouped little menu here. And we've placed this on slide one and set not only this object, the grouped object, which consists of a close button, the background shape with a color selected and some foreground shapes that have been set up to be used as buttons. We've grouped it all as a single object that we've called document underscore menu. Uh, additionally, I've created a variable and if I go to my project drop down menu and into variables, I can show you the variable for this because we need to keep track of whether this object is open or closed. Uh, you could have just simply a separate open and close button as Robert was going to do in his project, but I think a toggle is a little bit more elegant. So if we take a look at variables here, uh, you can see that I have a variable called underscore menu underscore visible. Its default value is zero. And of course, I've set up this object to be not visible in output when you first launch the course. So it has a default value of zero. And uh, when we press the menu button, the hamburger button down here, the menu will appear. And if you click on the close button, it will toggle using the very same advanced action. Let me show you how to write that advanced action right now. So we're gonna go into the project dropdown menu go into advanced actions and we're going to call this show hide menu or something to that effect. It can call it whatever you like, but it should be something meaningful so that when you go back to this project six months from now, you'll remember what this advanced action was for. So this is going to be a conditional advanced action. And the very first thing we're going to do is check the value of our variable. So in this case here, we're going to select variable and we're going to type in part of the variable name, menu visible, there it is there. If it is equal to the literal value of zero, we're going to run the following action. So in other words, if the menu is closed, not visible, we're going to run the following actions. First thing we need to do is update our variable value because now it's going to be open. So we're going to assign menu visible with a literal value of one. And next we're going to show our grouped object. In this case, it's called document menu. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is change the state of the document menu button to selected so that this is highlighted to let you know that it is currently on because I've created an, a multi-state object that includes a selected version of that menu. So I'm going to change the state of my menu button to select it. Uh, Robert was originally doing uh, fly in from bottom and I find that that could be where the problem actually occurs. Uh, choosing the right effect will really, I think, give this, uh, you know, a really good effect here. So I'm going to apply effect to my document 
menu. And this is an entrance effect. So we need to choose from the entrance options. Uh, I'm particularly fond of the stretch option. Now it won't look like a stretch in this case here, uh, but we'll choose stretch from bottom and we can select the parameters for that. Two seconds is too long. So let's go with 0.5. And some people see this, some people don't. I'm going to add some ease effect to this as well. And we'll go ahead and we'll click OK. Now, this is a toggle. So what happens when menu visible is already equal to one? That's going to be the actions that we place down in else. So I can save myself some work by holding down the shift key and selecting all of the items in my actions uh, section here. I can copy those and we can paste them down here and just make a few changes. So first of all, we're going to return this variable back to a value of zero. So let's do that. And in this case here, we're going to apply effect right away of our document menu. In this case, it's going to be collapse to bottom. So let's choose that. And that is, of course, an exit effect. So collapse to bottom. There it is there. Again, we'll just double check our parameters here, 0.5, and we'll apply an ease effect. Now, because we're going to move this up, I'm going to use the arrows up here so that that shows up first. Now, so there's time to see it because I'm going to hide this in a second here. I need to delay next action by a certain number of seconds. Otherwise, there won't be time to see the effect. So I'm going to delay actions by that very same 0.5 seconds, and we'll just move this up to happen right after the effect. At that point, we will hide our document menu. And we're going to change the state of our document menu button back to normal at this point. And that's pretty much it. So let's save this as an action. Click OK, and we'll click Close here. OK, so now I need to apply that advanced action, first of all, with our Menu button down here at the bottom here. We'll change that to Execute Advanced Actions, and we will find Show Hide Menu. OK, now we have this little exit icon here. Now, you might think you don't want a, a toggle for this, but remember that if this is visible, you're really only going to be closing it, even though you're using the same advanced action. So I can select that little X icon. If you click on the group object and then click on the X icon, you can then work with just that individual object without necessarily ungrouping it. So I'm going to execute advanced actions. And again, we will choose show hide menu. So we're pretty much good to go here. Uh, let's do a preview and see how this looks. Okay, so here we are on our overview slide, and there's my documents menu. If I click on that, we get the pop-out menu as it appears, and I can follow these links if I wish, and I can close it by pressing on that X icon. And I can do this throughout the course at any time because, of course, this is displayed for the rest of the project. So if I go on to the next slide, I can open and close this whenever I need it. And you can see that it lights up the original menu and then returns back to normal when it's closed there. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.